Hello, everyone. Space has always been, is now, and will always be an enormous source of inspiration. Setting goals, pursuing them for the benefit of humanity, for the benefit of everyone. My goal is to bring forward to you the value of uh, space exploration, in particular the value of uh, human space exploration, uh, again, benefiting everyone. When this picture was taken, the one you see uh, in front of you here, uh, that was uh, the 23rd of December 1999. I was together with my colleague Mike Fowl working on the Hubble Space Telescope, replacing uh, the main computer of the telescope and uh, one of the fine guidance sensors. We spent about uh, eight hours uh, outside. It was pretty hard. It was, of course, a magnificent uh, environment. Uh, the sky, uh, the weightlessness, the views of the Earth, uh, but it was hard work. And for us, it was inspiring not only because of the wonderful environment that we were surrounded by, but we were doing something that was really meaningful, fixing Hubble and to continue making it a productive scientific instrument. So these were wonderful eight hours spent uh, in space in the spacesuit, and we went five times around the Earth at that time. When this picture was taken, I, I had my head down. You can see the reflection of the Earth on the visor of my helmet. Look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes the universe exist. Be curious. This is the essence of uh, space exploration uh, by Stephen Hawking. And uh, space has been an inspiration for scientists, for writers, philosophers, artists, kids, and just for just about everyone. Uh, in uh, 1865, Jules Verne wrote a wonderful book de la Terre à la Lune, from the Earth to the Moon. The idea was to shoot a big bullet from uh, Florida with a big gun, and there were a few people inside that bullet, and there was a dog, and they were going on their way to the Moon. At that time, people thought that they were, they were good conditioned on the surface of the Moon to survive, and when they arrived on the Moon, they came out without spacesuit, and they were smoking cigars, and they had a good time. Wonderful story of inspiration. Later, 1954, Hergé, On a marché sur la Lune, a wonderful story, a cartoon story, uh, was, of course, uh, more touching in the French-speaking part of the world, Belgium, France, uh, uh, French part of Switzerland, and other French-speaking region, but it has been translated in many languages also. This is a beautiful view of this rocket, uh, nuclear engine-powered rocket that uh, took off from uh, somewhere in Eastern Europe and landed on the moon. And I think this view of this beautiful rocket on the landscape, which looks so much like the pictures that were taken about 15 years later by the Apollo astronaut, this is wonderful. This book inspired me a lot. I was uh, 10 years of age when it was published, and it was an enormous source of inspiration for me. Now the Apollo program, this is of course uh, in all of the human space uh, ventures, uh, one of the one of the definite highlights. Here you see a view of uh, the Earth, like a blue and white ball uh, from a distance of 400,000 kilometers, picture taken from the orbit around the Moon, not the Moon's surface. Now, of course, uh, what was very significant was the first step of Neil Armstrong on the surface of the Moon on the 21st of July, 1969. Listen. Uh, very very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Oh, that looks beautiful from here, Neil. It has a stark beauty all its own. It's this is so emotional. Every time I hear these words of Neil Armstrong, I get emotional. Uh, the, uh, he, he mentioned humankind. That's an important word. In fact, there was a, and there still is, a plaque on one of the four legs of the Eagle lunar module on the surface of the moon. And you can see here men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969. We came in peace for all mankind. It was, of course, a, a huge American success, but they came on the surface of the moon, and this first step of Neil Armstrong was in, on behalf of humankind. And uh, all of the 
human space program that followed, whether it was the rest of the Apollo program or the shuttle program uh, or the Russian program, the space station, and the international space station, this is all humanity going into space. And the astronauts and cosmonauts and taikonauts are representatives of humanity. Now, there were further steps on the surface of the moon on the following uh, missions of the Apollo program. We had Apollo 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 was the last one in December 1972. And uh, you will see beyond the first step of Neil Armstrong uh, how astronauts were walking on the moon and moving on the surface of the moon with their spacesuit with a gravity about one-sixth of the gravity on the Earth. This is Gene Cernan, Apollo 17. <laughs> Smaller when you do this than you go down slope. That first step is a long one. I'm having This is the best way for me to travel, uphill or downhill. What's that? Like this? Two legged hop? Or seems you know, and on level ground I can skip. I don't like that loping thing. Oh, the loping's the only way to go. Yeah. See, when I'm on level ground, I can skip. But <laughs> well, this is a nice lesson about how to walk on the surface of the moon. For the ones of you who will go to the moon in the next few years or next few decades, that was a good lesson by Gene Cernan. Now, another a very inspiring step, at least for me and for all the ones who were involved in the shuttle program, was uh, the very first flight of uh, Columbia. Uh, just exactly 20 years after the, the flight of Yuri Gagarin, it was the 12th of April, 1981, the takeoff or the liftoff from Kennedy Space Center, Florida. And here we have two days later, the landing at the Edwards Air Force Base, uh, Dryden Research Center. And in the bottom of the stairs, these were other steps in a way. At the bottom of the, of the stairs, you have John Young, who is a commander, and Bob Crippen, the pilot, is coming down and he's holding the handrail because uh, even after only two days in space, you're a little bit shaky when you come down on Earth. That's a wonderful picture. It means so much. The shuttle has been a wonderful vehicle. Uh, it was operated for 30 years between uh, 1981, the first flight, until 2011. Uh, has uh, allowed more than 800 crew members to go into space, low Earth orbit. Uh, has made possible the Hubble Space Telescope Program, the International Space Station. An amazing machine. Uh, here. Uh, one of my missions, the first servicing mission of Hubble, we had an optical problem with Hubble since three and a half years. We went up there in um, December 93 and uh, fixed the optical problem and also changed the solar rays and did some other repair. That picture is beautiful. This, is, this brings me a wave of, uh, of emotion. We are 600 kilometers above uh, Australia. Uh, you have the telescope in the bottom and uh, the robot arm, and at the end of the robot arm, a story must grave in the payload bay, Jeff Hoffman, on the fifth out of five spacewalks of this mission. In the background, you see Antarctica and the black sky. Wonderful. And uh, that's only one out of a thousand and thousand of pictures taken by Hubble. Since uh, that uh, repair mission in uh, 93, we had really great optical quality of uh, Hubble and great pictures, and every week you have several pictures that are being downloaded from, uh, from Hubble to the ground. And that's uh, just one of them, but rather representative of a, a deep region of the sky. You have a few foreground stars, which are blue in color, that have uh, crosses because they are point-like objects. And all the other objects are galaxies. The galaxy is typically about 100 billion stars. And uh, you have, I don't know how many hundreds of them in this small window in the, in, the, in the sky. It's beautiful. We have learned so much with Hubble. And it still is a very productive instrument uh, now in 2021. Now, it's not only human space flight and telescope in space, but also um, probes, rovers, and spacecraft that were sent to the solar system to get a better knowledge of the solar system. That was one uh, wonderful step in January 2005. An ESA spacecraft, Huygens, that was initially attached to the Cassini spacecraft uh, from NASA that uh, circled the planet Saturn and studied the rings and the uh, satellite for a long time. But Huygens was detached from Cassini, landed on the surface of the largest uh, satellite of uh, Saturn, Titan, and took this picture. This is the first time that the picture was taken on the surface of another celestial body than the Earth or the Moon. Um, wonderful picture and so meaningful, so inspiring. 
Um, sometime later, we had another great mission from the European Space Agency a visit to a comet, Comet uh, uh, 67P, Shurimov Gerasimenko, and you see this uh, object, which is like a big uh, rock with a strange shape, like a bone, about five kilometers in size, and it's getting close to the sun, and uh, the volatile materials are being evaporated and create the tail of the comet. That's also so beautiful, so interesting and wonderful and inspiring. Much more recently, we had uh, the successful landing of the Perseverance rover on the surface of Mars, and you see here an artist's view of the final approach to the surface of Mars of uh, the rover itself in the bottom, and there is a spacecraft on top which is uh, providing the braking maneuver uh, close to the touchdown of uh, Perseverance, and later it will cut the cable and will move away. That was a huge success. Landing on Mars is extremely difficult, and you see the enthusiasm and the passion in the control room at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, California, just after uh, the successful landing. This is inspiration, this is passion, this is enormous amount of talent also and capabilities. Space Station. That's the way we thought Space Station were going to be, that uh, from 2001, a space odyssey, a very clean environment and beautiful. Uh, now we have the International Space Station in space, and uh, that's how it is inside. But there is very productive work being done by astronauts and uh, cosmonauts. It's a wonderful project of cooperation between 15 nations, five space agencies, 15 nations, the US, uh, Russia, Canada, Japan, and Europe. And uh, of course, it looks a little, little more messy than the space station of Stanley Kubrick from 2001, A Space Odyssey, but very good work is being done there, research work. Now, pretty soon, we're going to go back to the moon. At least the, the American will go back to the moon for the other partners, uh, which are Canada, Japan, and Europe. Uh, it's going to be the first time uh, that we have the opportunities to go to the moon, uh, not immediately on the surface, although uh, the Artemis program plans in 2024-25 uh, to go to the surface of the moon, to the south pole of the moon. And uh, the other nations that are associated with the US uh, will occupy the so-called gateway, which is going to be kind of a space station in between uh, the surface of the Earth and the surface of the Moon. But anyway, back to the Moon. The Moon will be used as a research station, like a natural space station uh, to a certain degree, and it will allow us to do preparation work before manned missions or human missions uh, to planet Mars, which should ha happen in the 30s of this century. Now we need to actively pursue human exploration of the solar system, and someday we might uh, see what we see here, this is an artist's view of a, a human base on the surface of Mars. It might happen, it might not happen, I don't know. We will certainly start exploring and we will see whether the conditions will allow someday to have settlements of a large number of people there. We are not sure about that, but we will continue exploring. And uh, this is a picture taken by Cassini. I mentioned Cassini, which was joined with uh, Huygens that landed on the Titan, the biggest satellite of Saturn. That's a beautiful picture, which shows the, the beauty of space. Uh, that's, that's, for me, a very emotional picture. You see the, uh, the planet Saturn uh, itself on the upper right-hand side. You see the rings, and uh, Saturn is surrounded by 60 satellites, and many of these were studied in detail by the Cassini probe. Many of the technologies and the methods that we develop for space exploration will help us to save planet Earth. Uh, many people think that we should not spend too much uh, time and effort uh, to go into space because we have a lot of problems on Earth. This is true, but again, a lot of these technologies would be useful uh, to take uh, planet Earth in the following decades and centuries. And uh, the continuation of our journeys into space is a multinational effort because this is the case now. No longer the competition, but it's a joint effort of several nations will keep us as a forward-looking and vibrant society. Thank you very much.